Hello. So you want an adjustable supply for your lab, but you don't currently afford one? In this episode, I'm going to explain how to make a simple one using very cheap components that anyone can afford. So let's get started. Components needed are DP50V2A module and a cheap Chinese universal laptop charger that you can get from any local store. You can purchase this module from AliExpress or eBay with cheap prices like 20 to 30 dollars only. Other variations feature different voltage or current capabilities such as 5 amps, but 2 amps is enough for a basic electronics power supply. This module is a DC to DC buck converter. It takes a voltage and then outputs a lower voltage. So supplying it with 24 volts will allow us to use voltages from 0 to 24 volts approximately. So it is not a linear regulator but a switching regulator. Refer to my episode 4 if you want to know more about these two terminologies. Connect the input wires at the in plus and in minus terminals and the output wires from out plus and out minus terminals. Switch on the charger and you can see the module has started. This is the main screen which has voltage, current and power readings, as well as the set voltage and set current values. The four indication images on the right are, first, key lock or unlock, which is activated by pressing and holding of the knob. It locks the user from modifying the settings and can be unlocked by the same means. The tick mark states that everything is okay, but when something happens, like an overcurrent, it changes to indicate that. CV means constant voltage mode, while when current limit is activated, it displays CC which is constant current mode. And finally, the red power indicator means that you didn't activate the output yet. So when you press the power button, it turns green. As for the interface, the upper button allows for selecting preset M1 by pressing it for two seconds, while the lower one is for selecting preset M2 with the same way while on the main screen because they have other functionality elsewhere. The knob here is an optical encoder that can be pressed. It has multiple functions such as locking and unlocking as explained earlier. It is used to change values as will be explained later on. It is worth mentioning that the Chinese made user manual says that this is a potentiometer which is totally wrong. The set button allows setting the current and voltage. By pressing it, then pressing the knob, you can choose which values to change. Rotating it increases or decreases the values. Pressing set again enters the advanced settings screen. The options that can be set here are output voltage, output current limit, over voltage limit, over current limit, over power limit, screen brightness, and preset selection. Now the upper and lower buttons are used to move up and down in the menu. Let's modify preset M1 as an example. First we choose the preset and let's make it on. This means that when your output is supplying power to the circuit and then you picked preset M1, the output power will change accordingly without disconnecting the power from the load. While it, if it is off, when you choose M1, the output will be disconnected. Having off as the default is better for safety. After that, choose other settings like making it 15 volts and change brightness to maximum.
When you finish, get into one of the settings and press and hold the set button to store the changes of the preset in the memory. Otherwise, it will be lost. Now you can press set again to return to the main screen. While on main screen, press the up button for two seconds to pick M1. Then press the power button to activate the output. Now for activating other presets, press the set button in the main screen for two seconds and then use the knob to choose the required preset. After that, press set again to return. As a conclusion, I can say that this module is very useful and I recommend it. It gives the option of having a good enough power source for your electronics lab while being so cheap and highly available. However, I still recommend getting a proper bench power supply if you can afford it. You can use this module as a building block to create your own power supply. I hope you liked this episode. Press like, share and subscribe. Post a comment if you like to see a teardown of this module or any other idea. Your comments are always welcome. We'll meet again when I return in another episode. Thank you for watching.